Now with Jurassic World Dominion out in theaters, I want to talk about my personal favorite Jurassic World slash park films from worst to best. Let's get into it. Well, thank you guys for joining me. My name is Joseph Curtis, and if you love movies just as much as me, you have come to the right channel. Now, please don't forget to like and subscribe today. And also, if you want to follow me on the following social platforms, that'd be great as well. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into this ranking, shall we? Starting with number six, Jurassic World Dominion. This movie is really like Rise of Skywalker in a lot of ways. It's overly long. There's a lot going on. The characters you don't really care about anymore because they're so boring. You don't really feel connected to them at all. And the main storyline in this isn't as compelling as it should be for a final movie. Don't get me wrong. I love seeing the old characters like Alan and Malcolm, but they weren't really necessary for this film. It did feel like just a nostalgia grab. And trust me when I say I love seeing them on screen, but it pulled me out of the film every single time when they did show up because it didn't feel justified. It didn't feel earned. And gosh, I can talk about this movie forever, but please, please check out my non-spoiler review. This movie was a doozy. Now with number five, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I was genuinely excited for this film. I liked the idea that these dinosaurs had to leave this island and get to a safer place. And in doing so, they end up in this mansion and it becomes in the second half like a horror monster mansion movie. That sounds awesome. Like that sounds incredible. Like I love small enclosed like bigger than life stories, but somehow they feel intimate at the same time. But it went wrong in every single step with the execution. Granted, there was some unique sequences, but there were so few far in between with terrible characters, specifically terrible side characters, like Justice Smith is a great actor, but why would you put a character like him in the situation that he's in in this movie? It doesn't make any sense. This guy is literally screaming in the entire film. They obviously changed his character somewhat for the better, and he had less screen time in the third movie, but they made the writing team, they made some bad decisions when it came to the script. They're that alive, like, like me. me. That was one of the worst endings to the Jurassic Park slash world franchise. Yeah, I said it. I'm done. Okay, now with number four, Jurassic Park The Lost World. Jeff Goldblum is a great actor, but there's a reason why he is such a good character as Malcolm. He's the side character. You know, he's like one of those uncles that you have that you see once in a couple holidays, right? Like maybe you see him every Christmas. And there's a reason why they are your favorite uncle, because they're the cool guy. But the more you get to know them, the more you're like, you're not really as cool as I thought you were. And that's kind of how I felt his character was in The Lost World. There really wasn't anything engaging about him, but enough about the characters. The part that we all love, the part that everybody skips to when they watch this movie, is the trailer scene when it's on the side of the cliff with the T-Rexes trying to get their baby daughter back. You jerks, give us our kid back! I'm literally on the edge of my seat every single time I watch that sequence. Steven Spielberg is a master for a reason. Now this one's gonna surprise you. Number three, Jurassic Park 3. What is it? It's a birdcage. Now wait just a second, Joseph. This movie sucks. It is the worst Jurassic Park movie. Nope, you're wrong. That belongs to Dominion and Fallen Kingdom. This movie is actually a fun, engaging, brisk-paced 92-minute movie with sequences that are involving dinosaurs killing humans and humans running away from dinosaurs. And yes, there are annoying parents and they are one of the worst side characters in this franchise next to the little clone girl and the guy that likes to scream every five to 10 minutes in the film, Fallen Kingdom. I understand that, but it's short to the point and God, I love the dinosaur moments in this movie. Now with number two, Jurassic World. <laughs> Let
let me summarize Jurassic World for you. It's fun. It's engaging. It's jarring. It's boring. It's all over the place. But dang, I had a good time with this movie. And especially the last 10 minutes in this film. Chef's kiss. And I loved the idea that we finally got to see a park open. You know, some people want to say, yeah, it's a ripoff of the first movie. In some cases, in some story beats, I can see why. But overall, I don't think so. This is the version that we never got to see. This is the park being open. People going inside, having a great time, looking at the dinosaurs, what Hammond wanted, what he's always wanted for people to experience, to look and touch and see, not just read on a piece of paper, but to literally see for themselves dinosaurs. And the other thing that I really liked about this movie is that it is the closest to the heartbeat of Jurassic Park, specifically with this scene. <laughs> I don't know why that moment gets me every single time, but then you get moments like this. Friends' parents are divorced and, hey, knock it off. Are you gonna cry? And here's the thing, guys, with these sequels, the highest rating that I have given it, which is for number two, is a 7.5 out of 10. That's good, solid, but nothing has ever come close to what we are about to talk about. My number one is Jurassic Park. Boy, my head being right all the time. This is the movie that started it all. This is about John Hammond wanting to bring dinosaurs to our world so that we are able to see something larger than life. And Steven Spielberg definitely brought that. This movie has heart. This movie has action. It has spectacle. It has scale. And it stands for the test of time. For a movie that was made in 1993, it still holds up today. Yeah, some of the CGI may seem a little wonky here and there, but what they were able to accomplish back in that time is truly something to behold. And I respect the heck out of Steven Spielberg with the amount of work that him and his team had to accomplish. And now we get all these other sequels. Kind of wish we didn't. And I really believed if we just left this beautiful film alone, we would respect it even more for how it didn't have sequels. Steven Spielberg did something truly incredible with this film. And for some reason, every other sequel after this one just could not find that magic. Yeah, you have some dumb action ones like Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World, and then you have ones that lack heart and emotion. And for that, it's really sad to say that majority of these films didn't really need to be made. I mean, I'm glad that I got Jurassic World, the first one, because I remember watching that one for the first time and just remembering my first experience as a kid watching Jurassic Park. It did its job. And then, of course, they wanted to make sequels. And Colin Trevorrow literally said that he's always wanted to make something like Dominion. But it doesn't feel earned. I really don't think these movies are necessary, except for the first one. So if you are a fan of Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, these movies are escapism. So if you like the other movies, I'm happy for you because that is the point of film. It's subjective. It's it's to take you into another world. So just because I'm saying this doesn't mean somebody else is going to feel the same way. They might be like Jurassic Park 3 is the worst one and Jurassic World Dominion is the best one. I may strongly disagree with you, but hey, that's film, that's conversations, and I would love, speaking of conversations, I would love to hear your ranking. What is your list? Comment down below from worst to best of the Jurassic World slash Park franchise. Now with that out of the way, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also don't forget to be blessed.